Welcome to season two of Solopreneur Success Strategies. This is Jane Gardner, and we are going to be talking about home business startup. And、uh, we're going to be talking about starting, running, and growing your own home business, whether offline or on. Monday is all about mindset, of course. Tuesday is all about starting a home biz. Wednesday is about selling sales and your customer. Thursday is going to be about running your home biz, and Friday will be growing your home business. Saturday is all about putting systems in your business, and Sunday is all about strategy. So subscribe to this daily podcast to help you start, run, and grow your home biz. For more information, go to b o a h b dot com. This is Jane Gardner, and today on Grow Your Home Business, we're going to be talking about a guerrilla marketing technique that you may not have thought of in order to grow your business. With people connecting instantly by Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, and searching for contacts and business through Google Search, you would think there wouldn't be a need for business cards. However, people still want to meet face to face. There will always be a need to interact personally because first impressions of a person cannot be read over the internet. In the end, whether you trust and do business with someone can only be ultimately done face to face, and business cards reflect who you are and what is your business. If you get business card design done right, in this guide to business card, we will look at the history of the business card, what is the psyche. Psychology behind networking with business cards. What are some of the guidelines for the best business card design, and what is some of the new innovative designs in business cards?、Uh, before business cards, there were calling cards. As early as the 15th century, calling cards were in common use in China. Amishi, they were called, were sent to communicate your intention to meet with someone. They also doubled up as a form of personal identification to gain access to private homes or exclusive events. In the 17th century, under the reign, reign of Louis the Fourteenth, Visti Billet gained popularity amongst the French aristocrat. A calling card was sent, servant to servant, to announce the impending arrival of a particularly big wig. Victorian times. Uh, trade cards were becoming popular and were used by the merchant class in London. Businessmen would engrave them with information like maps to their stores and hand them out as advertising before or after a trade. Color printing and elaborate design helped the tradesmen stand out and become an early example of brand identity. In the twentieth century, the business card developed from the calling card to be a standard size card of two inches by high by three and a half inches long. With information about your business, your authority status, or your status within a business, your whether you're a president, etc., so it could fit into a rolodex and kept on reference to contact a person at a later date. The rolodex invented in 1956 was an improvement to an earlier design called the wheeldex. In order for business cards to fit into the standard rolodex, they had to be the standard size. So the only way to make your business card stand out was through color, text, taglines, or quality of paper. I remember reading the first guerrilla marketing book by J. Conrad Levison in 1984, and the use and dist- distribution of your business card wherever you are and whatever you were doing was a core guerrilla marketing technique. Guerrilla techniques include making your business card stand out by not making it two inches by three and a half inches, or making it out of unusual materials like wood or sheet metal, so people would keep your business card even though it didn't fit within their rolodex. Now the business card is a talking point when you meet another person. You'll never forget the 3D paper pop-up business card. Or the business card by Kevin Mitnick of Mitnick Security, which is made of metal and when taken apart, it can be used as a lockpick. Now, with the internet, people say the use of business card is not needed with the instant connections we can make. However, according to Statistics Brain, there are 27 billion business cards worldwide printed daily. Where there's a 2.5 percent increase in sales for every 2,000 business cards passed out. So why are business cards still being used in business? Well, they're being used for authority.、Uh, they're being more for one-on-one meetings between business people. What you say about your business and yourself is important as on your business card. Listing your university degrees or your level of your authority in the business needs to be recognized on your business cards. It's a simple way to show your experience and authority in your business. 
and branding the business card is a simple and expensive way to show what your brand is all about it represents you when you meet someone new whether you use thin paper or heavy quality watermark paper will affect how people perceive you when they don't know you your mission or your tagline for your business can speak to people as to who you are as it is on your business card it's also as far as trust building according to business insider the business card is being used to build trust among business people, especially in the Asian countries. They can be a quick way of establishing connections, particularly in Asia where there is something of an obsession. The Chinese are following the Japanese and treating them as semi-sacred objects. Some business hand out 24, b businessmen hand out 24 karat gold cards. Nursery school children sometimes carry cards not only with their contact details, but also with the job descriptions of their parents and even their grandparents. My husband went on business to Japan, and he had business cards made in the Japanese language as well as the English. He knew there was a presentation at etiquette for meeting the senior Japanese CEO, and he did remember to present his business cards face up, and he even remembered to hand it with uh, two hands, and he remembered to look at the Japanese businessman and nod in appreciation. However, he then put it in his back pocket, which is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Exchanging business card is not just a way of sparking a conversation, it's a way of placing people correctly in the pecking order without the embarrassment of asking them their formal title. As wearables go, this is a killer app, according to the Business Insider. Now here's a business card strategy you may not have thought about, but when I heard this from Gina Guadio Graves at DirectionsUniversity.com, I was blown away as I never thought a business card could be a strategy. Gina will bring boxes of her business cards to any conference she is in. She has a unique business card just for these events with the standard information on the front and on the back there is the word notes and some lines imprinted. Now anyone who would use this business card to take notes during a presentation, they can have be able to use them on the back of the business card. So Gina sees people who are struggling to find people to write down notes so she will chat with them and hand them several business cards or even boxes of her business cards for them to use to take their notes or write down the connections they are making during the conference to remember those people's email addresses and bit phone numbers. These people will then take home her business card with all their notes and email addresses from their connections that they will keep as well of course her information is on the front of the card so she is spreading awareness about her business by helping other people making those connections. What an awesome strategy. So what are some of the guidelines for the best business card design? Well, think about what is the outcome for your business card before you design it. Do you want to make a lasting first impression with a new client? Do you want to spread your business card here and there to advertise your business? Do you want it to be used as your calling card? If you look at the outcomes of using your business card, that will help you decide. Do try to keep the design of your cards clean and simple and avoid visual uh, overload or clutter at all costs. Considering using the back of the card or creating a folded business card if you need more space for additional information. However, make sure you keep the practicality of your card in mind. How often will people see the back of your business card? And of course, if you want, there is plenty of searching you can do on the internet to find out some unique uh, ideas for business card design. For example, to create a lasting impression for their new company, Canadian event agency Wildlife Experiential and Events included a clever feature in their business cards that let you start it on start a fire. Sorry, <laughs> start a fire. Designed by Vancouver-based integrated marketing um, firm Cosette, the new visual brand identity was based on a simple design brief: spark conversation. So, way out there, business cards can be more memorable. But they do, of course, have to really reflect your business card um, and your business should reflect you. So there's some ideas for you you probably haven't thought of about how to use business cards, which are inexpensive and ways to promote yourself and maybe even use them as a strategy. This is Jane Gardner, and next week we'll look at another guerrilla marketing technique. Well, I hope that will give you some ideas to implement in your own business. And if you want more, go to boahb.com and subscribe.